Let's talk about temperature modes. I need your help with this. This is probably the most misunderstood aspect in the key attributes. And the way we can explain it is this. If you're sitting in the dark, what do your pupils do as you're watching a movie in maybe a movie theater or even at home? What do they do? They dilate. What happens when you step outside with your family in that bright, sunshiny day, though? They constrict. Okay. Do you know that when they're dilated, that's considered high sensitivity? Your God opens our eyes wider so that we don't get eaten. He increases your peripheral vision at night. Did you know that? When the light comes in, you lose peripheral vision. How many of you drive the fire truck? For every 10 miles an hour, you lose so many degrees of peripheral vision. If you are a 30-year veteran and you hear people trap, working fire, I have the occupant on the phone, the kids upstairs, whether you realize it or not, your body dumps adrenaline into you and what do you lose? Peripheral vision. So we're already losing some of that under stress. But when I see bright light, my eyes go constricted. Why? What is, my, what is it trying to do to me? Focus and protect what? Why does the eye doctor give you those really cool glasses when you go home with your eyes dilated? Because if you drive home in a bright sun, it will cause what to your eyes? Damage. You're letting too much light in. So in low temperatures, I got my eyes wide open. That's high sensitivity. You won't see a triangle up there. But when it sees a certain amount of heat, the camera will freeze, the triangle will engage, and then the aperture closes to only let out a certain amount of heat because it's trying to protect what? The detector is like its retina. It can only absorb so many pixels. And every so often your camera will freeze. What it's doing is it's shuttering. The shutter will fire, the pixels will refresh, and it may happen every 30 seconds in high heat environment. So that is known as switching between high and low sensitivity. There's your triangle. In your camera, you won't see color till low sensitivity, right? So NFPA 1408 says all participants shall understand the functions, modes, and use of accessories, accessories specific to the camera being used. Well, let's see this in action. We look down at the floor where my firefighters are in Nashville Fire Academy. My triangle will go away because I'm in high sensitivity because I don't see the heat. When I raise it back up and point at the heat, what happens? Then I do gangster grip and it stays that way. Come back down, I'm in high sensitivity. When I come back up, it freezes for a second, and then I got color. This is the full video so you can see it better. You can do this with a burn barrel, a max firebox. Yes, you can do it with a gas stove, but I'm not a big fan of that. It's just they kind of overplayed that. I can show you different ways. Watch when it freezes, then the color shows up where if I'm in gangster grip, it automatically does that because I see all that in one shot, okay? This is your FLIR in high sensitivity. See the detail of the helmet? This right here is what gets people in trouble. You see that white, seemingly innocent line in that room next door? Two rooms away, it looks like that. But right there, does that look like much to you? We are terrible at interpreting grayscale. The ladies in the room, you will be happy to know that when I get to the colorization part here in a minute, you win on grayscale. Women can see more shades of gray than men, and the movies lied to us, there's more than 50. There's a thousand shades of gray in the color palette industry. There's 255 gray Crayola crayons, imagine that, in this image, contrasting grayscale images, pixels. But the human eye can only see 30, and that's the average female, and the average male can only see 10. Now, if you're under stress, both of you can only see four. So why do you think we have a stoplight with red, yellow, green? It's not three shades of red, okay? And, Lieutenant, something you need to find out, do a, some type of survey, how many firefighters do you have that are colorblind? Because if you're teaching them to recognize color and they don't recognize certain colors, have them come down here anonymously, however you want to do it, get you a small uh, bonfire going, put a victim next to it like a mannequin, and ask them when they see color and what they see or what they see at all and create their own color chart. That's what I do for them. If you don't do that, you're setting them up for failure. This is a simple demonstration of high and low sensitivity and what it does. This is prior to my carpal tunnel surgery. I want you to notice the ends of my fingers, what they look like. They told me if I'd waited, I would have had to have my fingers amputated. If you don't think that messes with you, so watch. My hand goes over the fire and poof, what happened to my hand? other than it's getting warm. Did my hand change temperature, really? Do it again. My hand starts off dark, 
And then when the camera changes to low sensitivity, how does my hand look then? Light. Did my hand really change temperature? What changed? The background. And it went to low sensitivity. How many of you have trained in cold smoke, fake smoke, looking for a heated mannequin or victim? What are you ingraining into a young, impressionable firefighter's mind that a victim will not look like, unfortunately, in a fire? Two rules, background and body temperature. Background, how hot it is? Is the camera high or low sensitivity? And is the victim alive or dead? If the victim's alive or just recently deceased, they are, they are known as an active emitter. Their body's trying to do what naturally? Regulate temperature so they will show up dark unless they're buried under something. If they've been dead and dead a while, how are they going to show up if they're not regulating temperature anymore? They're going to blend in with the background because they're just simply a sponge. Great friend of mine and fellow instructor Joe DeVito says this best. If your tick changes modes, so should your tactics. Please remember that. If you're that close to the fire and the triangle engages and you're doing nothing about it, don't blame the camera because it's warning you, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Firefighter, it is really hot. Okay? And if it's in high sensitivity, relatively, I can do what I call, I like my knees walk. If it's low sensitivity, I need to be what? down here and doing something about it. Or I need to get in and get out. I don't need to hang out and admire my work. Those of you who cut holes in roofs, they say you, you cut your hole, get off, don't admire your work. And here's what I told you about being careful about scanning too fast. We're in a cold hallway and we simply open the door to this room we created called Hell's Kitchen. And all we do is allow them to look into the room. We burn in all day, but we don't let anybody make entry. And we say, would you search this room? They let them look without the camera first. Then we let them look with the camera. Notice the delay first. And then what happens? Every one of them sees one pallet burning, and they say, yeah, I'd search that room. And then I let them look with the camera, and they say, oh, Lord, that floor is 600 degrees. That would hurt, wouldn't it? Right? And how about this one? Very well-respected firefighter friend of mine. Big house fire, he said, hey, I missed the fire. Uh, can you tell me what's wrong with this camera? This video is eight seconds long. He scanned left to right. Tell me when he missed the fire room. Anybody figure it out? Watch again. Ready? Right there, the camera is freezing. Watch what happens after it freezes. It tried to change modes, but what did he do? He kept on moving. Watch. It locks, freezes, and he keeps on rocking. What was in that room? Heat. Enough for the camera to say, ooh, trying to focus in. I'm going from dilated to constricted, right? Tactical patience, my friend John Dixon says. One second difference between these two images. What is the difference in the information you gain? Okay. Just because you don't see a lot of heat, does that mean you're in a safe place? I can point the camera in the floor on your fire attack in some cases and never see a whole lot of heat. This is outside of that room I just showed you. That's the door. Watch what happens when I grab the door. See it lock up for a second? Triangle engages. What's coming out of there? Heat. Watch how detailed this image is for those of you using the FLIR camera when we look inside this room. This is where image enhancement is a game changer. You can see the bolts in the paginite panels. You can see the framing of the crib fire. In some cases, you can see how many pallets are burning. That's how detailed the image is now compared to what we used to have. Those of you who've been around a little while, remember the first images were like blob, white, moving, gray, maybe. Not a whole lot of detail. And here's where it gets interesting. How many of you have found a hole in the floor like I have? I found it after I went through it. That's a hole in the floor in low sensitivity. Is that hard to see? Remember when I told you low sensitivity means low sensitivity to detail but high temperatures. In other words, I'm not going to see details really well that are four foot and down in that cold area, but I'm going to see the heat really well. So watch what happens when I show you this in real time. There's the hole. We've, we made a hole in a college dormitory floor. There's a burn barrel right here. We're going to shift over and point at the burn barrel. Watch the hole for me. Where'd my hole go? Could you easily fall through that? 
because you didn't see it. So is your camera supposed to be your sole source of navigation, determining all the threats in front of you? Shouldn't we still sweep, sound, do everything we're supposed to do? 